Welcome back everyone. In this video, I wanted to show you guys some basics of logging. Logs are awesome because if you have any kind of problem or even not a problem, you just want to understand something about your system, the logs will actually show you some very important things. So it's a good idea to know how to get to logs and how to view them. And that's what we're going to go over in this video. Okay, so back here on my machine, I'm going to show you guys a couple of ways to view logs. Some of these log files are going to require root privileges, so you won't actually be able to view them without sudo. Different logs have different permission levels. So what I'm gonna do is show you one log right now. This is a very common one. So I'm gonna do cat slash var log syslog. And a lot of information just passed by on the screen here. So what is up with that? Well, the syslog basically is a text file that includes all kinds of logging information about your system and it just keeps going and going and going. And it's not for any one particular category. This shows output for a lot of different things. So this is gonna look like information overload if you don't exactly know what it is you're looking for. So I'm gonna give you a practical example of this in just a moment. But what we wanna do right now is go into the var log directory. And let's take a look at the files that are stored here. And there's quite a few. So we see the syslog file. That's the one that I just showed you. And it actually is rotating that. So that these log files, they can become huge. And that's a big problem when you're managing Linux servers is that if you don't keep your log files in check, they can grow so big and then they can basically take over your free hard drive space. It's definitely not a good situation to be in at all. But by default, the syslog is okay because it's basically rotating and it's being um, compressed. So we can see here that that's actually not a problem. It's actually, you know, pretty much every day it's rotating and then from here down, it's actually compressing that. So that's being managed properly. We can see other log files here in this directory. I'm not gonna go over all of them because that would be outside the scope of this video. Um, we have an Apache 2 log directory here. And sometimes that's the case when you have a, a directory for an application, we see that we actually have a dedicated folder for Apache 2. And inside this folder, we have several log files. We can see an access log we can even see an error log. So let's just see what's inside the error log. I'm kind of curious about that. So I'll just, um, in, in the Apache directory is relative to my local path here. So I'm just going to um, cat from the Apache 2 directory, error.log, and let's see what's inside there. And we have some interesting things here. Now, nothing that really matters because you know what? We're not even really serving anything important. But if this was an important server, and we were having problems, we might want to check that error log to see if any of the output there will help us narrow down the problem. We also here have a D message log right here. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that. And mostly hardware information here and, and kernel information, things like that that are kind of more lower level are going to be included in the D message. Now, one thing that's interesting about this, actually, you know, I'm in the var log directory, and if I do ls, you see that I am in the same directory as D messages. Now, what I'm gonna do is go back to my home directory, clear the screen, and what I can do is just type dmesg, just like that, from this directory. And we can see that there's a dedicated command to viewing this and it's even giving me colorized output. So even though I'm not in that actual directory, I'm able to see some information about my system. So maybe if I'm troubleshooting some, um, some issues here, I might uh, you know, wanna look into this. And, and here's an actual issue that I may want to look into. My CPU is going above threshold, which means my CPU clock is throttling at times. That's not good. I'm probably gonna wanna check into that. Maybe I need new firmware on my laptop. Maybe there's some kind of configuration that I need to change. Something is going on here, and I might need to look into that. And thanks to the D message log, I was able to find information about that. Now, one thing I want to show you guys is the head and tail commands, which are very simple. I thought about making these into their own video, but you know that'd be a very short video. The head command will show the first 10 lines and the tail command will show the last 10 lines and you can customize how many lines it shows but i'll give you an example if i do head and i do slash var log let's just do the syslog again 
we see here that we have the first 10 lines. It's going to look like more than that because it's wrapping, but we actually see that we have additional things here that are showing up. We actually see 10 lines. If I was to change that to tail, I can see the last 10 lines of the file because maybe that's really all we care about is the last 10 lines. We don't need to have all of the log files showing up on the screen. If, if it's a log file with tens of thousands of lines, for example, and we use the cat command, well, we might be waiting a while for the output to finish before we, we, you know, we regain control of our session. Um, and if you're impatient like me, that's not a good time. And that can be customized too. So tail, maybe I want to show the last 50 lines. So I could do dash n and then 50 and then the file, the path to the file and file name. And now I'm going to see the, you know, last 50 lines. So I can narrow it down based on that. And, you know, that's pretty useful, but probably not the most useful thing. My favorite thing about logging or my favorite thing to do with logging is to do the, fo the follow option with tail, which is actually tail dash f and then slash var log or whatever the file path is and the file name, whatever that happens to be. It doesn't even have to be a log file. It could just simply be a text file. And what is that going to do? Well, we see that it is showing me the last 10 lines by default because I didn't ask for anything else. However, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of blinking at me. It's not even like returning to my command and letting me type something else here. If I press enter, nothing happens. So, you know, what's going on here? Well, actually, that's what I wanted. This is allowing me to follow the particular file. And any time the file is changed, it's going to show me the changes immediately. And I'll give you an example. I'll open a new terminal here. And then what I'm going to do is increase the font size again. But I'm going to get it out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to just restart SSH randomly. That's just something I'm going to do. So I'm going to sudo system ctl restart SSH. I know SSH is running on my laptop. It's something I have installed. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Immediately when I did that, you see that I have logging information here that automatically updated. So I could just, you know, press enter a bunch of times and create some blank space. And of course, we have some other things that are happening here. So, um, you know, I, I don't need any of that output, but I can go back here really quickly and just restart it again. And you can see that I see the output right away. So why does this matter? So if you are troubleshooting with a user, and you are watching them basically because you want them to reproduce the problem, but you want to watch the log file in real time, well, you can basically follow the log, and while they're trying to reproduce the problem, then you're going to see the output here, and that's going to help you basically follow along with the user as you're troubleshooting, and that's definitely a very, very useful thing to have. But there's also one more command that I want to show you guys that's relative to logging, and that's journal CTL, which is actually part of systemd that gives you another interface through which to view your log files. But with journal CTL, you can actually do dash u and then the name of a unit. So I could follow SSH by itself, and it's going to show me only messages that are related to the service or unit that I gave it as an argument. So the same thing would happen if I change that to Apache 2, it's going to show me messages that are related to Apache 2, which allows me to narrow down log entries to one specific thing. Now, of course, you could pretty much do the same thing in var log with the text files there by grepping for certain keywords, which, of course, is a very common way of doing that. So, for example, I can do cat var log syslog, but I can pipe it into grep, which allows me to narrow down the output and I can grep for Apache 2 and you're not going to get as much information because it literally has to have Apache 2 in the output whereas with uh, journal CTL we see a lot more because it knows that it's related to Apache 2 like for example this line right here doesn't include the string Apache 2 but it still shows it because journal CTL knows that this line came from Apache so it's going to make sure that I see it when I ask for it. Now you can also do a follow with journal CTL as well. So I could do journal CTL dash U and of course the name like I did before, but I can also add F in there as well. Journal CTL dash F and then U Apache 2, which I guess can sometimes be a hilarious um, order there, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but then anyway, I'm going to press enter 
And the same thing here, it's blinking at me. It's not returning me to my prompt. It's limiting the output to Apache, so I could, in another terminal, just do sudo system ctl restart apache2. And we see that as soon as I did that, I have new output here that's specific and exclusive to Apache 2. So this allows me to follow logs for a specific application while I'm working on it. I can make sure that everything starts up properly, that it restarts properly. I could basically watch the output of the logs while I'm doing actual work on my server. So that's somewhat of a high level look at logging. It gets a little bit more involved than that, but I think that's enough for now. You know from a previous video how to start and restart systemd units, and now you know how to use journal CTL to view actual logging output for them. And in addition to that, uh, you, go, you know about var log, syslog, and dmessage. Those are some definitely uh, useful files to know and check out. So at this point, if you run into a problem and you need to troubleshoot that, you should be able to actually use these commands to help narrow down any issues you might be experiencing. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.